This video covers assembly of both the Mantis four-wheel and six-wheel drive kits. For this project, you will need a Phillips head screwdriver, a 764th inch hex key, a 964th inch hex key, and a 332nd inch hex key, as well as a pair of pliers. First, you're going to take a 7 8 inch socket head screw and you'll feed a lock washer onto the, that screw and then that will go into your dual side mount. And you're going to put that into the dual side mount onto the side with the indention on it rather than the side that's flat. And once you get that on, you can tighten that as much as you can. And we'll do that a second time on the other side. Once you have that together, we're going to put on two of the number six standard washers. And then that is going to feed onto your beam brackets. And you're going to put this on so that the tapped hole screw side goes out away from the inside of your beam brackets. Once you have that on, you'll feed on another set of your number six standard washers. And then you'll finish it up with a set of lock nuts. And this is where your pliers are going to come in handy. Let's take that off for now. Put on one at a time. And what you want to do is make sure that it's tight but loose enough so that it can move. As you can see there, I had it pretty tight. And I'll just tighten it up and then move it back about a quarter of a turn. And that'll give me so it doesn't jiggle, but it still moves. So do that for both sides. Alright, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing again, but for the other side. So we'll take our side mount and our 7 8 inch screws. We'll put on our lock washer. Those will go into the side mount. And then we'll feed on a number six standard washer. Add that to the beam bracket. Both. Add another number six standard. And then a second set of lock nuts. Okay, now for this step, you're gonna actually do this twice. So you need to do this so that you have two of these because we're gonna put these together for our suspension. So you can click on the link here on the video and it'll send you back to the beginning of the directions. And once you get that done, we'll move on to the next step. So what we're going to do next is combine these together using this aluminum motor mount. And we're going to put these on to the motor mount so that your lock nuts are on the outside. And what I like to do is if you take these, you can push them together. And what it'll do is it'll keep them flat. And if you do that for both, it'll kind of make a nice little plane there so that you can hold them all on the same level. And then we'll put this on to each of the four holes and we're going to use a quarter inch socket head screw for that. So once you get those on, go ahead and you can go through back and tighten them all pretty tight. And then we're going to add the motor. So the motor will sit here right on the inside and it'll just fit right into that hole. And what you're going to do is line up the four holes to the holes on the motor and for that we have the three mil by eight mil pan head screws and when you put these together don't tighten the screws all the way especially on the first one because if you do you might have it lined up just so that it doesn't quite line up and then you're going to have a lot of problems getting the rest of your screws in All right, once that's done, we're gonna add on our wheel adapter and you'll wanna put on the wheel adapter so that the flat part of the shaft on your motor lines up with the black screws on your adapter. 
and this part will use the 332nd inch hex key. So you'll slide that on and then you'll use your hex key to just tighten that about as much as you can, but you don't want to go too hard and risk stripping out the screws on this. <clears throat> Once that's on, we're going to add our off-road tire. And for that, we're going to use the 964 inch uh, hex screw, and that would have came with your adapter. I've just gone ahead and taken that off already. And this has a, a hex pattern, as does your wheel. So you just slide those on together, and then use your screw and a 964 inch hex key to attach the two of those. All right, so this step is done, and if you are doing the four-wheel drive kit, you're gonna actually complete this step four times, and if you're doing the six-wheel drive kit, you're gonna complete this step six times. So what you can do is click on the link on the screen, and it'll send you right back to the beginning of the video if you need to, to go through each one of these steps again. The next step is to put together our shock assembly. So for what we'll do for that is we're gonna combine a shock with a dual side mount. And as you can see here, what you'll do is you'll have the dual side mount so that the indented side of the side mount is facing in towards the shock. So to do that, first we'll use a 7 16th inch screw and that's gonna feed in through the top of the shock. And then what we'll do is we have actually three washers here for that. First, we'll add a number six washer which is the smaller of the two that are not lock washers. And then we'll add another lock washer here, followed by a number, number, another number six washer. Once those three washers are in place, you're going to add the dual side mount. And screw that in until it is completely tight. Okay. And finally, what we'll do is we're going to add a half inch standoff and a 3 8 inch screw. And we'll just combine those like that, go in through with one side with your screw, and then connect your standoff. And you might ask yourself, which side do I put it in relation to the top? And well, that won't really matter because the uh, it can just kind of spin. So... Either way you put it is actually going to be right. It won't matter. So you can just put that on either way you want. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up. <clears throat> now for this step, as well as the previous step, you're going to have to do this either four or six times, depending on which kit you've done, the four-wheel drive or the six-wheel drive. So again, you can click on the link here to go back through the steps to put this one together. Next, we're going to combine our 18-inch channel with our wheel assembly. And when you get it together, it's going to be somewhat like this here. So in order to do that, what you'll do is you'll connect each of our side mounts that are on your wheel assembly, and you're going to connect them to the side holes on your channel. Now for this piece, the first one, what you'll connect it to is if you count on the top holes, you'll count, connect it to the fourth hole and the ninth hole. And you're going to connect those using the quarter inch socket head screws. All right, so once you have that on, it's going to look something like this. And of course, you're going to put on either four or six more. You'll put on ones on the outside and on the inside as well and on the other side. But for now, what I'll show you how to do first is add the, uh, the shock assembly first. So for this particular wheel, we're gonna put this on the inside. And once we get one on the other side, we'll put one on the inside as well. Uh, and if you have a six wheel drive kit, we'll talk about that in a second. But to attach this shock assembly, what we'll do is where the side with the standoff on it, we're gonna attach that to the bottom beam bracket. And the beauty of this kit is that with the beam bracket, you've got holes running all the way up and down it. So depending on how much resistance you want with your shocks, you can put it any, in any of those holes. But for this kit here, what kind of a good standard is the sixth hole. So I'm going to put mine on the sixth hole here, and you can put it there as well, kind of see how it runs for you, or you can go ahead and put it in any other hole. It'll work just as fine anyway. So that'll go in, and again, that's going to use another of the 3 8 inch screws. 
And once you get that on, in order to tighten it completely, you might actually have to use a pair of pliers and grab that screw that's on the other end, and then just tighten that up about as much as you can. All right. So <clears throat> once we have that together, what you'll want to do is add the other three wheels on that on this side, and then we'll add the other wheels to this side. So what I've already gone ahead and done is put it together here, just so you can see it. And you'll notice, so on the two outside wheels, I've added the shock assemblies on the inside. And on the inside wheel, if you're doing the six wheel drive kit, it really doesn't matter which side you've done. So again, the, the placement for these is the fourth and the ninth hole, as well as on this side, if you start from this side, it's the fourth and the ninth hole. And then to center it up, going from either side, because it's a symmetrical piece of channel, you'll be on the 22nd and the 27th hole. So again, just as before, what I've gone ahead and done is you can click on the link here and it'll send you back to the beginning of this step. That way you can run through it for each of the single wheels. Once you get it on one side, you'll want to go ahead and attach it to the other side as well. And you'll do it exactly the same as with the previous side. At this point, you should have all of the wheels on your kit. So what we'll do next is attach the channel connector plates. If you have the six wheel drive version, what you'll do is you'll attach the plates just right in the middle of in between each of your sets of wheels. If you have the four wheel drive version, what you can do is just count off five holes from your front wheels and five holes from your back wheels, and they'll go right there and there. And for this step, you're going to use the quarter inch socket head screws. And you will have four of these. So they'll go on either side of the channel. All right, next what you're gonna do is you're gonna place your 18 inch channel on the top. And we're gonna use that to line up our shocks where they go on the channel. Uh, what we want to do first is actually attach our shocks rather than screw this in and what that'll do is it'll allow us to take it off and move it and that's going to give us a lot more uh, access to the inside. So uh, what you can do is you can take these off and line up your shocks where they're going to go or what you can simply do is uh, count and again from these with these top holes it's going to be the 12th hole from the outside for your shocks on the outside and then if you have the six wheel drive, this one will actually go onto the 19th hole from the side that it's on. But what I'd recommend at first is actually placing it on top and counting those holes out and making sure that your shocks just kind of line up straight so that they're not off in an angle. You don't want to put too much extra torque on those if you don't need to. And when we put these in, uh, you'll have two screws, obviously, for each one. And there's going to be one that's closer to the inside and then one that's towards the, the bottom or the outside of the channel. Uh, as you go through this, I would recommend that you first put in your screw that's farthest to the inside of it rather than the outside one. Because once you get that other screw in there, it's just harder to get to that inside one. And especially once we get to this other side, it really gets to be kind of a pain to try and get in there and get to that inside screw. So it's just easier if you get it out of the way <clears throat> right away. And I don't think I mentioned this, but when you put on your shocks, you're going to want to make sure that the shock where it connects is at the top of the channel. You can actually flip these around and you can put it on that way and it'll be on the bottom of the channel. But what you're going to want to do is spin that. If you have it like this, you're going to want to spin it around so that it is at the top. Okay, so once you go to the next side, if you don't already have your kit like I do, to where the bottom channel is actually touching whatever work surface you're at, you're going to want to go ahead and do that. And that'll just give you a lot more room to work with, rather than if your, your kit's up. Once you have that in place, you're going to connect the two pieces of channel using your channel brackets and the quarter inch socket head screws.
All right, finally you have these rubber grommets that come with your kit. Uh, what we suggest you do is that you place them in between each of your wheels and they just kind of slide in there into the half inch holes on the Actobotics and that'll help protect your wiring as you set this up. However, because it is made out of Actobotics, it's going to completely versatile so you can put these in any of the half inch holes that are on the channel uh, what you might want to do is maybe place them just here in the bottom uh, right in between your wheels and have all of your wiring going in through one hole for each set of wheels instead of two you could do that you can place them into the top if you'd like you can place them in the sides anywhere you want this kit comes with six you can obviously get more if you'd like but uh <clears throat> we recommend you set them up here in between each of the wheel assemblies but you're free to do anything you want with this kit uh, also the kit comes with covers for your motors but i'm not going to set those up because you don't want to put those on until you've got your kit wired up <clears throat> but once you do they just slide right on and then you're ready to go so that is the entirety of the assembly for both the four-wheel drive and the six-wheel drive for the Manus kit. If you have any questions about this project, feel free to contact us at techaservocity.com. And as always, thank you for watching.